Portal season is slowly heating up for the Red Raiders as the coaches reach out to multiple prospects within the portal. In today's video, I'll discuss two bigs that the Red Raiders have shown interest in early on in the portal and how they would fit in the scarlet and black. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And speaking of the Scarlet and Black, are you a member of the Scarlet and Black Insider? Well, you should be. Head on over to scarletandblackinsider.com and get your first month for a dollar to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. We're keeping you up to date better than anyone when it comes to Texas Tech in the portal. And if you want to join the most engaging community of Texas Tech fans on the Internet today, it's very simple. Head on over to scarletandblackinsider.com. The link will be down in the description and comments below. And if you want to have your first month for a dollar, use the code SBI. All right, before we get into the two bigs that Texas Tech has reached out to in the portal, I want to hear from you guys in this sense. What is the biggest area of need Texas Tech men's basketball needs to address within the portal? Is it the actual bigs that well, some of them will talk about today? Is it length? Is it shooting? Is it a primary, primary point guard? Excuse me. Let me know. Because I think there's a lot of avenues you could go because in modern basketball and college basketball specifically, there's a lot of roster turnover. So let me know what you think Texas Tech needs to prioritize and their biggest need within the transfer portal is as of right now. All right, let's get into this. Early Texas Tech men's basketball portal targets. We will start with Amari Williams of Drexel, a 6'10 center originally from across the pond in England. He has one year of eligibility remaining. He averaged just over 12 points per game last year, just under eight rebounds and 1.2 assists per game. Don't let those assist numbers fool you, though. He's a really good passer. Now, he's also impactful on the defensive end, not only in the block department, but stealing the basketball as well as he averaged north of two and a half blocks and steals combined per game. I mentioned He's a really good passer, specifically at the top of the key, left-handed, and really knows how to use angles well within the passing game. Now, he also really understands angles well defensively. I just mentioned plus two and a half blocks plus steals per game. It's pretty damn good, regardless of what conference you're in. He's a guy that really does make an impact at the rim. Is he the most athletic 6'10 guy I've ever seen? No, but you he can be a lob threat for sure. But he's a guy also that at times, almost like Warren Washington this year when he was healthy, you can run your offense through because of how good of a passer he is. He's an effective rebounder as well with a 13% offensive rebound percentage. For those that don't know, anything above 10, pretty good. So for his size, he also is a guy that surprisingly gets out in transition and really shows his hands well. And for those that don't know, when you're running in transition as a big man, that's what you need to do. You need to show off your hands so the guards can see you and have a clear, effective point to throw the ball to and, well, make an easy bucket potentially. So he's a guy that really does that really well. And also, he creates a variety of mismatches that create really, really good looks, whether that's from the back down standpoint on the block, the top of the key, after a pick and roll switch over the defense in terms of passing. He's one of those guys. Now, I want to preface everything about this in the sense that Texas Tech did contact him early in the portal. He was one of the first oh handful of guys the Red Raiders reached out to, but he will have interest from multiple and I mean multiple Power 5 programs, whether that's on the East, West Coast, whatever it may be. But I do think that there's a chance that he could opt to stay on the East Coast. But don't get it twisted. Texas Tech is going to have a ton of interest in this veteran big. And I think personally, the other guy that we are about to talk about here in a second, if you could grab both, obviously, maybe a pipe dream to some. I think this would be a very dynamic duo in the front court for the Red Raiders. One more time, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long right here on the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube, the most subscribed YouTube channel in the Texas Tech content creator space. There's nobody bigger. We're double than other ones out there. It's that big right here. So join the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube by doing these three simple steps, liking the video, hitting that subscribe button, and turning on that notification bell. 
All right, I mentioned that I think that Amari Williams would be a really good fit next to this guy that we're about to talk about. And that would be Michael Nowoko from Miami. He's 6'10", a center, three years of eligibility left, a native of Toronto, Canada. Maybe the Dave Smart effect here could potentially impact his decision on where he goes to school. He didn't get much run at Miami. Don't look at the stats per se, but I do have the tape down below of both Amari Williams and Michael Nwoko in terms of what you need to look at from the standpoint of what their games provide. He averaged under three points per game, averaged just two rebounds per game, but he was a former four-star recruit in the class of 2023. He's a raw athlete and has really good touch around the rim, and surprisingly enough, can make that 15 to 17 footer, maybe not consistently, but it is in his bag in terms of defenses have to respect it. Now, he's a really good offensive rebounder. Remember that metric that I told you about Williams? He had a 13% offensive rebounding rate, and anything above 10 is good. Well, Nwoko has a 12.1% offensive rebounding rate. The place that he really stands out to me in the tape that I saw from him at Miami was he is really good at understanding spacing and screens in the pick and roll. He has the ability, as I mentioned, to make that 15 to 17 foot jump shot that just pulls the defense a little bit away and creates easy avenues or easier avenues to the rim for the guards in the pick and roll type situation. But also, don't get it twisted. He's a lob threat. He's really athletic, a guy that can get up above the box there on the board and really, really have an impact above the rim. He's a guy that when I watch him, I'm thinking to myself, OK, this would be fun with, you know, pop, chance, Darion Williams even in a pick and roll type situation in the sense of you didn't have a guy really outside of Warren Washington for half the season in the sense of you could just throw it up there and have a really good chance of going to get it if you were the Red Raiders. Nuoko brings that factor in terms of the lob threat, and he also understands the patience aspect of the pick and roll and has the soft enough touch in the sense of he can make a jumper from 15 to 17 feet away to create things for his teammates. Now, again, he's the type of guy that I think would be absolutely perfect with a vet big beside him. And Amari Williams, in my opinion, is one of those guys because they bring a different flair and different sorts of skill sets to really allow you to mix and match if you were Grant McCaslin. I will say this. It is very, very early on in the portal cycle. This is starting to heat up, but I think you're going to see a lot more activity from really a lot of teams going into April 1st in that week. That's when you're going to see a lot of guys enter the portal and you're going to start hearing a lot of guys taking visits. Hopefully the Red Raiders can get Amari Williams and Michael Nwoko on campus because as we know, if Grant McCaslin, as he showed last year, gets a guy on campus, they typically commit. I mean, he was six for six last year. And the only reason one of those guys didn't show up to campus in terms of actually being on the Red Raiders team was because there was a medical issue. Oh, by the way, that guy now transferred from Charlotte and is now part of the Iowa State basketball program um, going into next year. But these are two guys that I'm super interested in. But before we head out of here, I want you to tell me one more time, what is the biggest area of need for Texas Tech men's basketball to address within the transfer portal? Is it what we just talked about? Is it bigs? Would you want more wings? Do you want a primary guard that can score the ball and just be the lead guy? Let me know down on the pinned comment below. And one more time, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. And also, head on over to scarletandblackinsider.com to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. Austin Massey, Jacob Harris, and myself are keeping you in the know on not only what's going on in the portal, but also the coaching carousel, what we're hearing in terms of other schools from around the country since Texas Tech is in a good spot. We're keeping you up to date on everything college basketball with a, well, focus on the Red Raiders. So if you want to join the most interactive community on the internet, over on the Scarlet and Black Insider, it's very easy. Just use the promo code SBI for your first month to be a dollar. And if you want to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube, like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell.